In this video, I'm gonna show you how to trim out a window. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This channel's all about building your house, saying a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in turn for making this video. So we got a lot of windows to trim, so let's get started. The window that I'm gonna show you how to trim out is a standard five foot tall window that's three foot wide. And no matter the dimensions of the window, they can be customized showing you the exact techniques that I'm using in this video. And also I'm using a three and a quarter colonial trim and there are a bunch of ways to trim out windows. This is not the only way to trim out windows. This is just the way I prefer because it's a very simple method yet it looks really good. And the first thing we're gonna have to do is paint this trim because it comes primed. This is just primed pine trim. The paint that I'm gonna be using to paint the trim is Valspar Signature and it's just ultra white without any other color added. And now this is semi-gloss. I always paint my walls satin, then all my trim accents with semi-gloss. It just gives the trim a nice sheen. So let's get started painting. When I first purchased the trim, I like to take sandpaper and sand off any humps or bumps that's on the surface of the primer. And then I'll wipe it off thoroughly. And then afterwards, I'll put it all in a bundle and then hit the edges. So that way I don't have to cut the back of the trim later when it's installed up against the wall. After I apply the paint to the side of the trim, I like to take a brush and just to smooth out any type of runs that could be located on the side of the trim. And then I'll lay the trim out across the workbench and then I'll just run the brush over it one more time before applying a coat of paint using a roller. Then after I apply the paint using a roller, I go back through with a brush so that way the paint gets evened out and down into the creases of the trim. And you can also spray the trim if you don't want to use a brush and roller, but the sprayer is definitely extra cost and it was cold out on this day so I couldn't take it outside and spray it because I do not like to spray inside. I place paper over the window so that way we can film in here and you can see what I'm doing. If not, the whole screen will be blacked out and all you can see is the window. So the first thing we got to work on is what's called the window stool. That's the base that's in the bottom of the window that gives you a place to set things and it also gives it a nice look. So let's get started. This is the profile of the window stool I'm going to be using. As you can see, it has a nice routed edge right here and gives it a nice decorative look. So you can use anything you really want to use as a window stool, but this is just what I prefer to use. A lot of people even just use square edge window stool, kind of like the end of it here. So it's all up to what you want as window stool. When it comes to building the apron, I like to use a piece of the Colonial three and a quarter that I'm gonna be using around top of the windows. And it's gonna set roughly right here. And just so you get the idea, this is just a little piece of that window stool. It's gonna sit back here. Now, I don't want the overhang to be this long. That's a pretty good bit of overhang. I only want about an inch overhang past the apron. So with that being said, I'm gonna have to rip this down some. So if I hold that up there, it's gonna give me a measurement from here to there, about three and a half. So I got three and a half from clear back at the window to this edge. So I'm gonna add an inch to that because I want an inch overhang. So as you can see, I need to cut this down to where it's four and a half inches wide instead of being five and a quarter like it is now. So the first thing I do is rip down a board to four and a half inches that's gonna act as the window stool. Here's a full eight foot piece of the window stool. Now let's go rip this baby down. The quickest way to rip down this window stool is to use a table saw. You can use a circular saw, but I recommend you using a guide if you do. And now if you look here, this rounded edge is gonna be facing out. And I'm gonna rip off the square edge because this is gonna be the back up against the window. So I already have the saw set to rip off the desired amount to give me four and a half inches finished here. To determine the length of the window stool to where it's gonna come out on this wall, I must determine where my trim is gonna come down where this window jam is. So I know I wanna come over for a quarter inch reveal. So if I measure over, I got a quarter inch right here. And then from that quarter inch, I know my trim is gonna be three and a quarter inches wide. So that puts me over three and a half inches to the edge of the trim, so about right there. So if we mark three and a half on the wall, now that I have the edge of the trim marked, I want an inch past that. So that's gonna put me at four and a half inches away from that window jam. So I'm just gonna make a nice little mark right there. 
So now I know the distance from the edge of this jam to here is going to be four and a half inches. So I need to get the measurement in between the window from here to the other side of the jam and add nine inches for four and a half on this side, then four and a half on the other side. When I measure the distance in between the jam, I got 34 and a half inches. So if you add nine inches of that, that gives me 43 and a half inches. So I know I need to cut my window stool 43 and a half inches. For this window casing job, you're gonna need what's called a miter saw. And this miter saw has a slide on it so it can come out real far for wide trim. And it also has a double bevel, but we only need one that does a single bevel. And also you wanna make sure you use this and try not to use a circular saw to make your cuts because the cuts aren't gonna be near as nice. So just a word of advice. And now we're gonna cut that window stool down to 43 and a half inches like I mentioned earlier. As you can see, after you cut that window stool, it's just a straight cut, but I like to route this edge because it gives it a nice finished look. And if you don't have a router and, or the router bit to do this, you don't have to, but I highly recommend it because it's gonna make it look very nice. So in order to do this, the tools I'm gonna to be using is a router with a router bit that's the same design as the edge of that window stool. And that window stool I bought at a big box lumber supply store. So it came with that edge on it and I had to find the corresponding router bit and I found it on Amazon. If you wanna purchase it, the link is in the description below. And also, I'm gonna be using two of these quick grip clamps in order to secure the window stool down while I route it. And this is the exact router bit that I'm going to be using right here. And as you can see, it has the same design as the edge of the window stool. So let me show you how to do this. First thing I got to do is secure this window stool to the bench. So that way it secures it so it doesn't shift around on me. Next, I need to measure two and three quarter inches off this edge and make a mark. And that's off the edge that's at the very end of the window stool. And now I gotta take a speed square and line it right up with that mark we just made. And then take my other quick grip and secure it to that piece of stool. And now this is simply gonna act as a guide. I'm now gonna take the router and run down that edge and route this edge. And as you can see, that gives it a nice routed edge that's just like the other side that came from the factory. Now for this next part, we need to find the center of this window stool. So it's gonna be roughly right here. And then I'm gonna double check this way, make sure it's about the same. And that's about the same. And we wanna make sure we mark right here on the edge to that center. And now we need to come over to the window that we're trimming out and do the same thing in between this window. So it's gonna be about 17 and a quarter. I'm now gonna take the center mark of the window stool and the center mark of this window and line them up with each other. So right there, so now we know the stool is setting dead center of the window and then we just mark the window jam to where it hits that window stool. So it looks like about right there. And then on this end, it's right here. And now we need to measure the inside of this window jam thickness, so that gives us two and three quarters. So we need to cut two and three quarter notches out of each end of this window stool. In order to mark the cutout, we're gonna take our speed square and come up two and three quarters inch and make a mark in a line and right there. And then come over here two and three quarter inch as well. And then we need to make a straight line from point to point here. And then after we make our straight line, we know what we gotta do is cut this section out in order to go around the wall to go back into the window. And do the same to this side. I'd like to take my miter saw to make these two straight cuts just because it's much quicker than using the jigsaw. And now to finish up this cut, I just like to use a jigsaw. This is an oscillating tool from the Rigid Job Max. And now I'm just gonna make this cut over into that line. Then I'm gonna use it to finish up the rest of this cut. And now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Now we're gonna dry fit this to see how it looks. And it looks like it fits really well. Everything looks nice and tight. So now before I go any further, there's one tip I wanna show you about these edges. I'm just gonna hit a little bit of paint over this edge before I install it. 
So that way I don't have to worry about cutting this in later. So this will serve you well when it comes to the finishing process. I'm now going to take this window stool and place it back where I removed it from just a minute ago and place it tight to where it needs to be. And now I'm just going to take finish nails and shoot in the back side of this window stool for now. I'm now going to take a torpedo level and check to see if the front needs adjusted in order to make this level. And actually that's setting really good. Now if it did need adjusted, we can take shims and adjust it accordingly, but I got lucky on this one, it's setting where it should be. So now we're just going to put nails in the front side of this window stool to secure it into place. Now when it comes to cutting the apron that goes underneath this window stool, I must first get the measurement. So if we take a measurement in between here, if you remember right, it's 34 and a half inches, but this time I want the apron to come out flush with the end of my trim on the outside. So we take a measurement, if we have a quarter inch reveal plus three and a quarter inch trim, that gives us three and a half inches off each side from the side of this window jam. So if you add seven inches, three and a half on each side plus the 34 and a half, that gives us 41 and a half inches. So now I gotta cut a piece to go underneath this window, 41 and a half inches. In order to cut the apron, I must first turn a bevel onto this saw at a 45 degree angle. And the reason why we gotta do that is because we gotta build a return on each end of those to give it a nice finished look. So we're gonna slide our bevel over to 45 degrees and then we're gonna lock it right in place. And in order to cut this stuff, we know we need to go into the trim and not have it like an outside corner. So in order to do that, we're gonna slide our trim over here tight against the fence and give us a nice 45 degree cut here first. And now we're going to go ahead and mark our measurement on the trim, which was 41 and a half inches. And now we need to turn our trim over this way so that we don't have to turn our bevel on the saw. And now we're ready to secure this to the wall. In order to install the apron, we're just going to hold this up to where it goes roughly. And then we're going to take our tape measure and get equal distances from each end of the window stool to the apron. All right, that's exactly center of the window stool. Now we're just gonna secure this trim tied up to that window stool. In order to finish the ends of the apron, I'm gonna take the scrap piece of trim left and I'm first gonna bevel each end at a 45 degree. Now we're gonna put our saw back at a zero bevel. And now we're gonna cut square right to the point of that trim. So we need to keep this piece, then flip this around and do the same to this side. And we need to keep this piece. To finish these edges, we're just gonna take this piece and glue it right into place. So what I'm gonna do is just take standard wood glue. This is my favorite wood glue, but I'm just gonna take this wood glue, put just a little bit on the back here, and we're just gonna glue that right where it belongs. So just as simple as just putting it right into place and just something like that. Oftentimes the tackiness of the wood glue will hold this into place, but I like to take a piece of blue painter's tape just to secure this for at least several hours. Now it's time to install the window casing around this window. Now if you don't have too much experience doing window casing or trim in general, what I recommend you do is go ahead and mark the reveal of your trim around the jam of the window so that way you have marks to go off of. But somebody with experience can do this step without marking the exact measurement. Come down here and mark over a quarter inch around the bottom, middle, and top of where the trim is going to be installed. So we take our measurement over and we're just going to take a quarter inch make a little mark there so now we know that there's a quarter inch reveal. To help make this process a little easier, there is a tool on the market that's called a trim gauge that helps you mark around the window easier. I now gotta get a measurement from on top of this window stool right up to that quarter inch mark that's on the top piece of the jam, and that's gonna be our short points of our 45. So let's go ahead and get those measurements. And I got 58 even, and over here the same way, and I got same thing, 58 even. So I gotta cut both ends 
58 to make our sides. I'm gonna cut the casing for the right side of the window first. So what I like to do is check out my factory cut that came naturally on the trim, and it's a little rigid, so I'm gonna cut this off to give me a nice straight end. And now I'm gonna measure up to that 58 inch mark on the short end of the trim. And this side's gonna be for the long angle, so this is gonna be on the short side here. So we're gonna measure up to 58 inches. And now, just by visualizing, we know we need our 45 that's angled this way. So what we're gonna do is turn our saw to a 45 degree angle this way. And now I'm gonna cut right on that mark of the short point. So as you can see, it's nice 45 degree angle. I'm gonna place my trim right here where it belongs. And as you can see, I'm lined up right with that mark. And now what we need to do is secure it here first. And I'm just going to use my finish nailer. This is a straight finish nailer, two and a half inch nails. And I'm first gonna anchor it to the jack that's behind the wall here. And now, as you can see, we can either nail this end or place another one here. I'm gonna to try to nail this in, but you do gotta be careful, it will split this sometimes. So as you can see, that turned out okay. So now we gotta work this trim, see how it moves left and right to keep that same reveal that we got here going up the trim. So we're gonna pull it over a little bit, and we're gonna anchor it again about every 16 inches. And again, just work the trim left and right to keep the same reveal and keep nailing it off as you go till you get to the top of this trim. And our mark that we made earlier is right here for a quarter inch reveal. And that looks good right there, so we're gonna secure it. Now we just do the same thing to the other side of the window. Now when we cut the top piece to join both sides, you measure from the long point to the long point this time instead of measuring the short point. So we're just gonna hook on the very end of it and measure right over to the outside of this trim. So we got 41 and a half inches and we know that's gonna be from the tops of the long points. I'm first gonna begin by putting a 45 degree angle on this one side first. And whenever you make a cut, make sure you're tight against the fence and flat on the base of the saw. And now we're gonna measure our distance, 41 and a half inches. And now what we're gonna do is turn our 45 over to this side. And then we're gonna go over here and cut our mark and that's gonna be the top of our point. And it's just slightly long, but I'm gonna go ahead and check it up in the place first before I cut that little bit of 16th off just in case it's the right measurement without cutting it short. Because after it's cut too short, you can't add length to it. All right, so if we place it up here, if we put this 45 degree where it belongs on this side, over here, as you can see, we're definitely a little too long yet. So we gotta cut just about uh, 16th heavy off that. A little trick I learned, we need to cut just a little bit off the end of trim, is we'll place it where it belongs, We'll put our saw blade down and then we'll slide our trim right up against the saw blade and put a little bit of pressure on it, lift up our saw, then we cut and it's gonna take just a little bit off. And we'll test that out. A common problem here, you see how that drywall's out just a little bit more than this window jam? This window jam came on the window, so that's why the drywall isn't perfectly flush with it. And that's what's causing just a little bit of a gap here. That's okay, that's common. We'll just have to put a little caulk in that. We're now gonna dry fit this and see how it looks one final time, hopefully. Yep, and that looks really good. So now what I'm gonna do is add wood glue to these ends before I nail it just to add a little extra security. When it sets up, it's gonna be definitely more firm. So now we'll go ahead and set it in the place where it belongs. And then I'm gonna start on this side, nailing it and securing it. And I noticed this, these pushed up a little bit, so I'm just gonna tack a nail here. And that drew it up, that looks better. Now we're gonna secure it here. And that's all there is to putting the casing around the window. Anywhere you have a finished nail that wasn't sunk in all the way, we need to go through with a punch and a hammer and just tap them in. So I just run my finger across each hole, like right here, I can feel there's a little bit sticking up. So now I'm gonna tap this down. 
The best way that I've found to fill in these little nail holes is to use spackling. And what I like to do is put a little spackling into a bag like this and then tear the corner out and use it kind of like a caulk gun or a cake icing bag and squeeze just a little bit out. And because this trim is contoured, we cannot use a straight edge in order to flatten this out. It's a little more difficult. So what I do is I just take my finger, press a little bit in, and then just smear it off like so, and then just do that to all the nail holes before I paint. And whenever you have a spot in a groove like that, sometimes you can just take a wood chip in order to smooth out that nail hole. I know there are some people out there that will not go through and spackle each nail hole like this, but I have found in the long run you're definitely better off because when the light gleams against the trim in certain angles, you'll see those nail holes as plain as day. Right here where we had that drywall that was sticking out a little farther than the jam, we got a nice little crack, we got a caulk. So I'm just gonna take my caulk gun with a little bit of white. This is caulk that can be painted, so you definitely wanna make sure you use that. Just gonna fill in that crack. Even though that joint looks nice and tight and paint may even fill that in, I do usually run just a little bit of caulking there, just so when you paint over it, it looks seamless. Caulking around the window not only improves the appearance of the window, but it also helps seal the window and keeps it airtight. And now around the window stool, I'm gonna wipe down the window stool and then caulk right around these edges anywhere that needs just a little bead. Let's go ahead and remove this paper to see what our final look looks like. That turned out really nice. Now after this has been setting for at least 24 hours, I'm gonna take light sandpaper, go around all the trim and hit it with a coat of paint with the brush. And if you need to know how to install shiplap, check out this video. It'll help you out.